Welcome to labmins.com and our lab video series on BGP. You can find a complete list of our BGP video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. When you're trying to understand BGP, it is without a doubt the past selection process is one of the most important topics. So in this video, we're going to look at BGP attributes that makes the routing policies in BGP possible. And this includes in the order of lowest to highest preference, router ID, BGP metrics, multi exit discriminator or MED, route origin, AS path, local preference, and weight. So for our lab topology, we have seven routers, R1 through R7, each configured with either IBGP or EBGP sessions. And each of the router has loopback 10 through 12 with the subnets of their own slash 24 that gets advertised into the BGP. And we also have peer group configured on R4, peer template configured on R1, 2, and 5 within the AS100, as well as the BGP VRF configured on R7. All of these has been accomplished on our previous video. And so as you can see, the topology remains the same compared to what we already dealt with in the previous video, with the exception in this video that we're going to be introducing an extra eBGP session between R2 and R3. Okay, so our starting config for this lab is going to be pretty much based off the video RS0061. And before we start, I just want to show you a Cisco document on BGP best pass selection algorithm. And this is the document that we're going to keep referring back to as we progress through our lab. And this document pretty much has the BGP best pass selection rules laid out for you from the highest preference, which is the weight, all the way down to the lowest preference at the bottom. And we're just going to work our way up from the bottom to the top. So let's begin our configuration task number one with the router ID. So the first thing we need to do is to configure that extra eBGP session I just told you about between R2 and R3. And that's pretty straightforward. So between R2 and R3 here, so I'm going to jump on to first on R2. Going under router BGP 100 with the neighbor of 172.16.123.3, which is the LAN interface of R3 with the remote AS of 200. Okay, and on the R3 side, router BGP 200 with the neighbor of the IP of the R2 LAN interface, which is 123.2. And then remote AS of 100. Okay, give it a second for that to come up. Okay, right there, it looks like it came up already. This is from R2 to R3. Next, we need to configure R3 to always use the peer router ID as a tiebreaker for all the external routes. And just to put some color into this, if you go back to this document, by default, you can see the router will prefer the path as far as the external routes that the router has received first. So it goes from the oldest to the newest. And just to show you how that works, we're going to get on to R3 and then do a show IP BGP of the R5 loopback interface. You can see currently R3 is learning those routes from R1, R2, and R4, but currently preferring R1. But since the AS path of the route received from R4 is longer than those that's received from R1 and 2, it's always going to pick either R1 or 2, but right now it's preferring R1. So if you're trying to clear IP BGP session between R3 and R1, so we do 16, 1, 2, 3, clear from R1. And then you do the show command one more time. You can see how the route that's being received from R2 is now prefer because that's the oldest route. And obviously, if you go ahead and clear the session from R2 again, it's going to flip back to R1 because R1 routes becomes the oldest routes. Okay, so that's pretty much the default behavior with the external routes. But our task right here says that we always want to use the router ID for the tiebreaker. And by the way, this only happens when two routes are absolutely equal in every way, which is if you look at our diagram, R3 is, re is receiving the exact same routes from R1 and 2. And as far as the AS path and any other attributes, they are totally equal. And that's why it has to resort to the tiebreaker, which is by default the router choosing the oldest routes. So in order to override that and use the router ID instead, going back to our Cisco documents right here. So the router will continue to pick the oldest routes until one of these conditions happens. And the first one, which is the one that we're going to use here, is the 
command to force the router to use the router ID as a tiebreaker instead of the edge of the route, and the command is bgp best path compare router ID. And that's pretty much what we need for our task. So getting back to our router R3 with the router bgp 200, and the command we need to change the default behavior is bgp best path compare router ID. Okay, and the description for that is compare router ID for identical eBGP path. Enter. And now going back and do one more test. So currently it's preferring R1. So if we go ahead and try to clear session to R1. Give it a second, it works properly. It shouldn't be flipping over to R2 anymore because R1's always gonna have the lowest router ID. And let's do the show command, as you can see, as soon as the R1 recovers, it flips back to R1. Actually, we didn't catch with the moment, but it was uh, preferring R2. Looks like it happened too fast. We can't quite catch it, but as you can see, it doesn't matter how many times we clear the session to R1, it's always going to come back and prefer R1 for that. Okay, that's all we need to do for uh, task number one. Okay, so for our next task number two with IGP metrics, we need to configure R5 to prefer R2 as the next hop to reach AS200 without modifying any BGP configuration. So let's take a look what we have on R5 looking out to uh, AS200. So here we are on R5, show IP BGP. Let's just look at the route that's originated from AS200. As you can see, that includes the default route, R3 loopback, and R6 loopbacks. And currently, R5 is preferring for all of these routes, R1. Okay, and that's because everything, again, as far as the BGP attributes and characteristic of the routes here are equal. And that comes down to the tiebreaker. Since this is the IBGP, it's preferring the router ID or the lower router ID, which is R10.1. And just to do a quick trace route from R5 to R6 loopback 10. You can see the R5 is exiting through R1. Okay, so let me uh, bring up a Microsoft Paint. This is pretty much a diagram that we are dealing with in this lab. So currently R5 to reach the R6 is taking, let me pick a different color right here through R6. So what we're gonna try to do is to reconfigure R5, so refer R2 going out to R6. And the task requires us not to change anything with the BGP configuration. So going back to our BGP document here, okay, the next step up from the lowest router ID is for the route to prefer the lowest IGP metrics to the BGP next hop. So what we can do without the changing any BGP configuration, manipulate the metrics instead within the IGP. Okay, since we are using ISIS for our internal routing within the AS100, on R5, the next hop on R5 currently is R1 and R2. Loopback addresses, so if you do show IP route 16.0.1, you can see currently it's half the metrics of 20 to reach R1 loopback address for the next hop. And if you do the same show command, it's also half the metrics of 20 to get to R2. Okay, so what we can do is to increase the ISIS metrics uh, facing towards R1 on R5, and that would be our interface. So the metrics get calculated as the routes is received on R5, so we need to add the metrics right here on the interface on R5 facing R1. Okay, and that interface is 0, 0, colon 0. And by default, the ISS metrics on the interface is 10, so we're going to bump it up to 15. So the command is ISS metrics, and then 15. Okay, so let's just add the uh, five more to the interface metrics. And now if we do show IP route 16.0.1, you can see that the metrics has increased from 20 to 25. Okay, while well, the metrics to R2 remains the same. So now if you do the show command one more time for the routes from AS200, and you can see now instead of the R5 preferring R1 previously, now it's preferring R2 just because it has the lower IGP metrics to the next hop. And we can also try to do a trace route one more time to 6601. You can see that 
now R5 exit out through R2 to get to R6. Okay, so what we just did, we increased our ISS metrics from 20 to 25, and on this side it remains 20, and that's why R5 prefer the lower metrics going out this way. Okay, and that's our task number two. Okay, moving on to our next task, task number three with MAUD exit discriminator or MAD. So MAD is basically just the metrics to the route, and that's in fact what the command is called, is the metrics when you configure in the BGP. And just like any other routing protocols, the router will always prefer the routes with the lower metrics. Okay, and that's what the MAD value is. Now we're gonna to have to use the MAD to configure R1 to make R3 prefer R2 to reach R5 loop back 10 through 12. Okay, so what it means is we're gonna to have to configure R1, so somehow to force R3 to go through R2 in order to get to R5 loop back interface. So by default, when R1 and R2 advertise out R5 loop backs routes, they have, those route has the metrics of zero. So when it advertise out that way, the matrix is zero, as well as we get advertised that way, the matrix is zero. So what we're going to have to do with the met value is to increase the met value of the routes that's being advertised from R1. So let's say if we increase that up to 111, then when R3 receives those routes, it will see that it has a higher metrics or met than the one that's received from R2, and it's going to force R3 to choose R2 to get to R5. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And again, just to go up, refer back to the documents right here, this is what we're dealing with with... Uh, Step number six, which is the router prefer the path that has the lowest MET value. And there's actually more to the MET as far as the route selection, which we're going to go through in this task. What we need to do is for R1 to add a matrix to the routes of R5 when it goes towards R3. So first we need to come up with the prefix list to categorize or select our R5 loopback routes. We're going to call R5. Allo, and we're going to include all three of the R5 loopbacks by doing slash 22 less than or equal 24, and then create a route map called 2R3, permit 10, mesh IP address, prefix list, R5 loopback 0, and then here we're going to do a set metric, although it doesn't refer to that as met, but that's what it is, it's a metric of 111. Okay, it's just pretty much any value that's higher than 0, which is all the values. And then route map, just don't forget to advertise the rest of the routes. Just permit 20. And then match, match to nothing. And then router BGP 100. Neighbor 16123.3. Route map 2R3. Out. Okay, don't forget to put that into effect by clearing the BGP, doing a route refresh, outbound. All right, so now going on to R3, do a show IP BGP 5500 longer. And now you can see that previously, before we add the met value to the routes, R3 prefer R1 to get to the R5 loopbacks, and now that the those routes as being advertised out of R1 has a higher metrics than zero, it's now preferring R2 since it has a lower metrics. Okay, and that's obvious overrides what we have earlier as far as the having a router ID as a tiebreaker. That's because the that the router ID tiebreaker is a lower preference uh, path selection rules. Okay, since we have moved up to MET, obviously MET is prefer a criterion as far as the route selection. All right, again, if you do a quick trace route from R3, so trace 5501, you can see that R3 first go, then goes to R2, so R3 goes to R2 and then ends up on R5. All right, so let's take a look at our next task, which is, again, using the MET value, configure R3 to prefer R1 to reach R5 loop back 10 through 12, and we are not allowed to manually set the mat using the route map. Okay, so what this means is currently R3 is preferring R2 going to R5 with R1 advertising the metrics of 111. Somehow we're going to have to reconfigure R3 to again prefer R1. So coming in this way, 
but the matrix is still 1, 1, 1 on this side without manipulating or manually setting the matrix on the route map. Okay, since we need to use the mat, somehow we're going to have to make the matrix of the routes coming from R2 looks worse than the one that's coming from R1. But by default, those are zero, so somehow we have to increase that value higher than 1, 1, 1 without manually setting the metrics using route map. And the way to do that is through a command called BGP best path met missing as worse. So there's a way for a router to view any routes that has metrics of zero and pretty much max out or increase it to the max so the metric looks worse than the one that's coming from R1. So you see it right now. If we go on to R3 and using router BGP 200 and the command for that is BGP best path met missing as worst. Okay, so the description said treat the missing met as the least preferred one. So as soon as you enter that command and then do a show of that, you can see that all the routes that originally has the metrics of zero after that command has been entered has been increased to a very large values. So that's how you can force or mandate that all the routes must have the metrics set explicitly. Otherwise, it's going to be made as the worst or least preferred routes. So now you can see that although the metrics of the routes that's coming from R2 has been increased to a large value that's larger than the routes from R1, it still hasn't flipped over. So what you're going to have to do is to clear because the change doesn't take effect immediately. So what you have to do is to clear the routes that's being received from R2 by doing let's say 216.123.2. Okay, give it a second. And then now you can see that R1 has become a preferred router due to the lower metrics. Okay, referring back to our Cisco document right here, you can see that if you enable BGP best path math missing as worst, the met will become this value right here instead of a zero.